Welcome to a special interview from Ramping Up Your English. My guest today is Dr. Gokhani. Dr. Gokhani, when I say doctor, it's medical doctor. Yes. Uh, as well as he's a producer here at the TV station, produces a couple of shows that are, that are very educational and helpful for people. And what we want to explore a little bit is your language background. Uh, where were you born? I was born in India. And in India, uh, did you start your acquisition of English in school in India, or was it after you moved away? No, in India, first four years of primary education, we didn't have to learn English. But from the fifth year, we start from A, B, C, D, you know. And A for apple, B for ball, like this, you know. And then we learn throughout the middle school, high school, but we don't talk in English. I see. You're probably learning the rules of the yeah, grammar. Yeah, grammar and everything. We write essays, but very difficult to speak in English for us because that was not a habit. So if you want me to tell you, then when I went to university, because our lectures were in English, so we are exposed to the professors and lecturers and to hear in English, understand in English, but still they didn't uh, bother or they didn't force us to speak in English. So we were speaking in our local language, you know. And what was your local language? My local language was Gujarati from the state of Gujarat where our prime minister at the moment, Mr. Modi is coming from. So you must have had three languages you were dealing with because it's Hindi, right? That's the national yeah, language. Four, four language we had to, uh, Hindi, Gujarati, English, and Sanskrit. Four languages we had to do it in the middle school and high school. So people in the United States, well, I shouldn't say everybody in the United States, but there are many people in the United States who have never had that experience of learning more than one language. And I've heard people, even people with high educations, say, well, I'm just not wired that way. I can only speak one language, as if that's a, a limitation of a human being. Yeah. What do you, how, how do you respond to that? I will say that they are poor in the language world, just like poverty in economics. If you got more money, you are rich. Otherwise, you don't have any money, you are poor. So I will say it's poverty of culture, really speaking, because I tell you my story. Anyway, then medical school, we had to speak, answer, but still in conversation, we were not. Then very first time, when I went to England for my post-graduation, I was in a dilemma to speak. I was knowing how to speak, but you know, your tongue is tied. Yeah. But first 15 days where, when I was in England, it was difficult to converse with the patient, the nurses, though you are a doctor, but you are ashamed that you can't speak the language. But after two weeks, I think freedom of my tongue happened and then I started still, you know, my English may not be as good as you guys or English people or European people, but now I can speak anything and everything and I think in English also. Ah, do you remember the first time you dreamed in English? Because that's, that's such a landmark for many people learning so another language. What did you say again? The first time you dreamed in English. Oh. Um, that may be, I will say, after uh, a year or so in England, when I went in, um, for my post-graduation, that was 1965, when I was 30 years old. I see. Uh, you know, one of the points you made about, uh, you know, here you were at advanced education level, and, and you were ashamed of your language, yeah. of, of the level of your language. It's something as a language teacher that, that I have uh, run into, and that's the, the confusion of language ability or proficiency in a language and the intelligence of the person. 
And, and what I think of is uh, back when I was in Mexico, we had a, a class learning Spanish. So everyone was from different language backgrounds, but we were all trying mm. to learn Spanish. And there was a woman in there from Poland, and she was like a world-renowned specialist in architecture. Mm -hmm. But she sounded like an idiot. <laughs> because because her Spanish was so limited. Yeah. I'm sure I sounded like an idiot yeah, too, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you ever had anyone, you know, give you, you know, interact negatively with you because of your limitation in the language? Yeah. That I can tell you when I started working as a doctor, uh, my first job in Mumbai, that time it was called Bombay and uh, hospital's name was St. George Hospital, and all nurses speak fluent English. And as a doctor, I started there, but I could not speak one sentence perfectly. Mm -hmm. Though I knew I can write essays of 10 pages, but speak spoken language, I didn't have. I felt so ashamed that how can I be a doctor in front of nurses, they laugh, you know, when you cannot utter or you cannot reply in English one full sentence. That was the first time. Yeah, and I think that's something a lot of the people in our audience are, have experienced as well as, you know, you're, you're taking that risk of using a language that you're not good at yet. And it is a risk. Yeah. And sometimes you lose the, the, the risk, you yeah, know. You're yeah, but I will say everybody has to face this situation, but overcome with confidence and just perseverance that you have to work. I tell you two more language I had to learn when I went to practice in Africa, in Kenya. There, it, there was a Swahili, Kiswahili. Oh. I didn't know anything, but most of my patient, I can say 98% of the patient will speak in Swahili. And then my secretary will interpret in English. I uh, speak in English, she will interpret in Swahili to the person. That's why I had to learn this African language. Then time came that tourists mostly came from Germany and uh, beaches in Kenya, in Mombasa especially where I practice so beautiful, so they started coming in bulk, you know, special chartered flights and all. And as patient, I didn't know German. I had to do evening classes for six months. I s at least started speaking and understanding the German language. So, you know, language is an asset and it makes you more smart, and your brain has got a different communication and learning area where you feel yourself so much happy, you know. So you understood English enough to become a doctor. Yes. You know, it's very high yes. technical yes. Kind, yes. Kind, of, uh, kind of language. Because books were in, in medical school, books were in English, but only thing the speaking was the problem. Yeah. We understand we write, as I told you earlier, but uh, speaking, there was a fear that I can't speak. Yes, and I think that's, that's where the biggest risk is, I think, in a language, yeah. is when you're actually putting it on your tongue. Yes. And it's not always going to come out right. You know, that, that's the thing I try to encourage my listeners. Don't look for 100% accuracy. Yes. Don't look for perfection. Look for, are you communicating? Are you getting your ideas across? I'll give you a good example. When I went to England, I had a uh, three-year-old daughter. Now, she didn't know a single word of English. And the children, uh, our doctor's campus, other children were speaking English. So she was playing with them, and she was with the guests, sir, with our language, she will reply, they will speak in English. And in 15 days, she started speaking English. <laughs> That's great. Not as grammatically perfect, but she could understand and she could make other people understand. But in 15 days, so that daring, like a child, you must have. 
because you have got the same capacity, whatever age you are, you have got the same capacity, only your intention and effort is needed. Absolutely. That, that, that's the bottom line. And you know, we, uh, I try to always keep in mind, children e in their native language do not get instruction when they first start yeah. speaking. And yes, they make a lot of mistakes, but they're all, look, he's talking, you know, he's saying yeah. da-da or whatever, yeah. you know. Uh, we don't put a lot of pressure on them, or we shouldn't, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. And th th there's a natural ability for people to, to, to acquire language, you know. And I think the, the more you take advantage of those natural yeah. things. Now, uh, I should point out that here you are, uh, English has not, was not your first language. At one time you were kind of ashamed of your limitations yeah. in English. And here you're in the communication business. You, you have these shows that people watch and you are speaking to your audience and they come back and watch it time and time again. And you'll be surprised. I don't prepare about my show. It is all extemporal now because I know the main uh, title or subject of this uh, my show and then uh, whoever is my guest and we interact as we are interacting. We didn't uh, prepare anything that what you will ask and how I will reply or what yeah. I will... Re no script. Then it be because your fear is gone. Most important in learning a language, don't be frightened off. Just be like a child that so what if I can't speak perfectly but if I have to play with the other children, those who are speaking different language, I have to be with them. So they become fearless, you know. That sounds like a great word of advice to end on. Thank yes. you very much for being on Thank with you us very and much ramping for up your English. Inviting me, yes. And I'm learning still I'm a student of Thank you. all language. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for doing that.